maybe I'll just go over it real quick with you guys or whatever. But you know, um, is there a wider shot? There you go. There's our wider shot. But yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. So as you all know, this uh, strap broke here. I mean, look at how weak this fabric is, right? Don't recommend this body armor, but I've been using it for a few years. So I got a replacement. We can find it. Well, first of all, let's check our sources before I... It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. All the lights on, do we? Uh, Only just this one. So yeah, we can do this. Um, I don't even know what this is called, what armor this is called, but I guess we'll find out soon. Right? This one is called, uh, what the hell is this called? NC Star. Oh, this is NC Star. So yeah, this is like, um, the one that it said on Amazon is Wartech Gears Tactical Fast Vest. Molly Pell's fully adjustable law enforcement. Uh, but I'm reading here, it's NC Star, which is... They made like a lot of like, airsoft gear and stuff, you know. Okay. First, first things first. Don't go to war with this. Don't use this for police or law enforcement work and all that. All right. But look, if you're just a journalist like me, if you're a stringer like me, and you might just use it for maybe 20 minutes every night, maybe 30, maybe an hour. I don't know. Um, on some nights of the week. Well, you know, guess what? It's probably gonna be fine. This lasted me um, a good, what, two or three years or something, right? So, comes in a small little package. And I'm already hoping it's a similar product. I'm not sure if it is. It seems like it is. Uh, all right, I'm noticing some differences. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the same. So, yeah, I don't know if you can, can see it, but yeah. Which, which is the front, which is the back. Um, yeah, this is the front, this is the back. Right? So, I mean, the first thing is first, what I do want to do is get the armor out of the old one and put it into the new one. Which is located on the rear. Look around. And this are, these are your uh, Kevlar inserts. From what I've, I read, these do stop. Uh, and this is what? Kevlar, right? Got it from a Body Armor Mega Store, right? It says right there, Body Armor Mega Store, soft Kevlar, right? This is not the one. This is not like the uh, what is it? AR five hundred steel plates or whatever. This is not the the uh, ceramic uh, plates as well. This is Kevlar. And it stops. Oh, 
So, we're going to put this in the front of the vest. It's the front of what is the back? Well, the back has a carrying handle, drag handle. So, let's say I get shot, a buddy can grab this and drag me to safety. Alternatively, he can grab the shoulder. So it's very similar. Uh, I forgot what I paid for the, my original vest, uh, plate care, I should say. Um, but this one, I think it was like less than 50, right? That's crazy. This side worn against body. This side is also softer. This part is a little harder. Uh, Fits perfectly. Let's get the rear one out. And these are pretty much identical. Uh, these are not like, oh, this is the front plate, this is the rear plate. Darken my windows. Okay. Now, it also says the level 3A. So this is a level 3A Kevlar. And again, it stops like, uh, you know, pistol rounds. So yeah, so know how loose this is now and soft this is once I take out the, uh, the uh, soft plates, soft armor. Yeah. So now the front is installed. I'm gonna put the back in. You know what? I'll probably do. Is I'll just make. I'll just cut this video out of the live stream. And maybe this will be a how to video called How to Set Up Plate Care uh, or Body Armor for Press Work or whatever. So, this is the sides of the body, um, this way. So now this is good to go as far as the uh, uh, soft armor being in here. Now there's the question of um, the height of the, uh, I mean, the adjustment of the shoulder straps, which dictates. You ever see guys, right? Police, SWAT, whoever. You'll see the plate carrier, right? And keep in mind, this is where the armor is, right? You'll see them. It's like down here. You know, vital organs are right here, right? I wish I could not get the plate out again and show you, but... So you want that, I want to say, right here, right? What's that, clavicle or, I should know this, right? EMT, I took anatomy. Pretty much right here. That's the easiest way to describe it. Not so high up your choking, but just right here, right? And also being, uh, keep in mind what the back's gonna look like. You don't want that to be dragging. You don't want to be, uh, uh, have the back lower than 
the front you want it pretty much equal right now if I look at the shoulder straps pretty much it's almost so this is the shoulder pad you can take this off and do the adjustments inside pretty much I adjusted it to the maximum so where you pretty much just have the shoulder pad and then the plate carrier material itself right you don't have uh, but how you get this stock is that you're gonna have the the pad here and then no, check out all this extra fabric I'm not sure if I even like this style of uh, shoulder pad so no it's not exactly the same but let's see what I can do with it here I have a request here. I have a request on the one two three six for Fajanana Road, Real Avenue to Rockland Avenue. Again, so, uh, one two three ten requesting. Uh, Thereabouts the picture. Not at this time. Show that um, EMS still on scene. Therefore, show me responding to the scene. Uh, they are located. Notify me of uh, what medical facility is involved. Alright, that's one. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm liking this, but you know what? Whatever. Let's just try and tighten it as much as possible here. Right, and what I do with this extra strap. What do I do with that extra strap? Maybe I can tuck it in here. Yeah, let's not worry about that. My goal is just to make this wearable for now. Uh, oh, it just you can just Velcro to the front, I guess. So this shoulder pad here is adjustable, right? I mean, you can move it around, but I'm not sure if you can remove it completely. It has Velcro, but does not appear that it's uh, removable. Yeah, so you're pretty much stuck with it. It's not a bad thing. You don't want, especially if you mount a lot of stuff on here, which I don't. You probably don't want a lot of stuff on there anyway. So I think this is good. I think it should be good. And. Uh, I wouldn't mind cutting these things off. It's not like, this, these are usually to route um, hydration bladders or uh, maybe uh, comms, like if you have radio or whatever, but really uh, I don't think it's uh, necessary. So I'll probably cut that off at some point. I'm also hearing about a possible job, might go to it, just waiting to hear. Alright, so now it's equal. There we go. So now we've got a plate carrier set up the shoulder similar to what I had originally. Uh, Next is the uh, side attachment points, which is the uh, Fastex buckles. Again, I'm not a fan of Fastex buckles. However, I'm not a fan of Fastex buckles, but you know, this is just a cheap plate carrier. It's not going to have elastic cummerbunds, it's not going to have Velcro cummerbunds. It's just a cheap plate carrier. So, it's getting hot in here. Let's do 70 degrees. So 
So I'm tightening this up quite a bit. So yeah, I think that should be fine for me, right? That's what it looks like so far. Hopefully we don't need these tags. And I think, yeah, this only had one tag on it, so. Um, now, what else do we want to attach on here? Now, ideally, I, I think I have in the past even attached a medical, uh, like an IFAC uh, improvised first aid kit. Um, but I found it to be too protruding, right? Kind of get in the way. I think ideally I would have something that is maybe one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five, six, six by three Bali uh, webbing uh, real estate occupying this right here. Not something that's just small and protruding, right? In fact, I do have my that pouch, and I think it's um, attached to a uh, EMT bag I have at home. Probably should just bring that one, right? So, for now, the easy things we can do is, you know, attach our patches. This you can get on Amazon or eBay. This custom name tip you can get um, whatever you want, your name or your uh, stringer organization or whatnot. Uh, I got this fabric, sorry, um, what is this, white on black fabric with the velcro uh male velcro on the rear so and of course it has a lot of uh velcro real estate to mount your patches so i'm going to go ahead and put this on the top And this one on the bottom. And I keep in mind uh, that Velcro real estate only goes up to here. So here, there's nothing really, but there's it's still stuck on there pretty good. Now keep in mind when I go to a protest, right? Makes total sense. Makes total sense. All right, so that's the back in the front. We actually have a um, admin pouch. The admin pouches are pretty much just small pouches. You can put on some accessories in there. I like to keep maybe um, um, like, uh, camera wipes maybe and then I'll put my press card in there while it's still around my neck but I'll still stick the press card in here and then it will stick out saying you know uh, press identification city of New York etc so so this is held together not by Molly not with those Molly um, straps that you find on some Molly pouches but it's held together with uh, malice clips sometimes can be a pain but but you need like a flathead screwdriver or your nail to get, get it out. Oh, there we go. We got it out. There we go. So my son Christian, he hates 
routing Molly pouches. Um, <laughs> I think he got the hang of it though, but I know he's definitely not a fan of doing it. I had to do some of his pouches when we went to go play Airsoft in Boy. Ohio. Admin pouch is off, right? That's the malice clips. And uh, you pretty much, if you can see, if you're not new to molly webbing, by the way, you can see these strips, <coughs> strips of webbing, right? And Velcro, you would weave it into the molly webbing on, on the plate carrier, and then it would go on this, kind of like that, right? Then it, Go back into the plate carrier, go back into the uh, admin pouch, and then finally you will stick this in the uh, in there, and then it will pretty much lock into place. And that's how molly webbing works in general, and that's how malice clips work. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Is on Washington Bridge. And that's why you guys ever see like um, civilian backpacks these days? Molly has become pretty much almost like a fashion trend. And that's why you see the, uh, Molly webbing on backpacks and such. Um, some people will just use them to stick pens in there, but the real purpose of Molly webbing is to attach additional pouches uh, because essentially anything with Molly is modular and customizable. And there you have it. That that part is set up. Now I just need to stick the malice clips into the malice clips. Yeah. Yeah. And boom, it's locked into place. Another thing I put on here is a uh, cat tourniquet. You guys recall the cops who shot the guy in the Belt Parkway? Well, they shot him in the lake and immediately uh, rendered first aid. They stuck a uh, cat tourniquet on uh, that victim. Is that Anna Kornikova, the nurse version? It looked like the nurse version of Anna Korn Kornikova. So your, um, this is a uh, tourniquet pouch I got for my cat tourniquet. Really like it. I mean, let's say if I got shot and they need, someone needed to access my tourniquet, guess what? It says TQ right here, tourniquet. Obviously, that's what it is. And it's in red, too, because, hey, you need to see where that tourniquet is, right? You open it, and your cat tourniquet is immediately rapidly deployed, ready for use, right? 
Now this comes You're with um, your molly webbing. Well, not really molly webbing, but this almost resembles belt keepers that you would wear on your uh, duty belt, right? But pretty much you can clip this horizontally or you can do it vertically. Uh, if you did it vertically, it does come with that vertical molly attachment. Part. But I like it um, horizontally and right below that admin pouch. Right. Yeah, that's the beauty of molly webbing. They came out with it, I want to say... I don't want to say the Gulf of War. I want to say maybe Operation Iraqi Freedom, maybe. OIF. That's where our guys would be, uh, you know, soldiers would be wearing the interceptor body armor. They came with the uh, uh, LC1, LC2. Pretty much a uh, molly system. Now it had molly webbing on. Yeah, I have an IFAC, but I'm looking to switch up to a different one. Something that's going to be more comfortable with this because I didn't like this protruding giant thing that's. Um, so yeah, what the our soldiers would do, U.S. Army, uh, they would mount their magazine pouches and such directly to the uh, interceptor body armor when, as opposed to what some others may do, would mount the pouches to the vest. But they can also wear that vest without the interceptor body armor. Let's say if they're going on like a recon mission or something. Trying to find a good example. Yeah, kind of like this, right? You see, the molly webbing is on that interceptor body armor. And by the way, that body armor was huge. It was not built for comfort. It was not built for mobility or flexibility, from what I heard from um, uh, from soldiers. You know. Look at how much of the belly that covers even, you know, uh, these days it's all about high speed, low drag, slick, and uh, plate carriers that is going to be, um, allow you to be mobile and flexible, right? So you look how short this is. This is not some giant, like, you know, you notice here, um, it's cut like that so even when I wear this my back here like my lower back is exposed and then there's my belt and that's how it's supposed to be so you can be flexible you can run around you can you know but uh, I think someone said man your, your, your armor is too small he said something about my body armor is too small well that's the trend these days if you look at you know, Yes, you, SRG, or whoever. You're going to look at their body armor, you're like, hmm, that would look some small on some people. Well, especially on some people, you know what I mean. Uh, but it even looks smaller if they wear a jack, wear it over a jacket that's not the jacket, like the, my duty jacket, the 511, 3-in-1. Uh, Is it 5-in-1? Does not go past the belt line. 
so I can access the stuff on my belt, right? There are some jackets, like the I believe it's called the parka, right? Those go past the belt. And um, if you wore this over a parka, it looks like a little skirt is, is, is hanging out of the body armor. Does not look sexy, okay? Um, does not look tactical. So this over, I, I believe my my uh, duty jacket or um, even over this fleece jacket or or just over my polo shirt, which is tucked in, by the way, uh, looks good. Looks good. But yeah, even soldiers aren't exempt from the whole skirt look. Uh, some of them would wear their BDU jackets untucked. Uh, this was not the case in the movie The Black Hawk Down. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw that movie, but I feel like the uh, costume person or whatever were pretty strict about how they wanted everyone to look. And everybody tucked their jackets in their pants and with the the way the body armor was it, they just looked they look everybody looked real nice of course in in war and whatever they're going to do what's comfortable or not necessarily is you know designed to look sexy or whatever they would just wear their video jackets over their pants and then they just th throw the body armor over that and uh they did that a lot but you know whatever right well, that's just a personal pet peeve of mine. Of course, nowadays you got uh, you've got combat shirts, which is like a synthetic fabric of Under Armour, and then you've got the sleeves or camouflage, and of course you're gonna tuck that in, right? So. Now let's attach this. Unfortunately, the Molly webbing does not allow us to attach it the way I want it to, but you know, it's kind of loose, but it d definitely does work. I saw some uh, ESU members, they have their cat tourniquet attached to their, right next to their holster. Um, some of them, uh, I believe all cops carry a tourniquet on them as well. and. Uh, I believe they attach it, some of them attach it directly to their belt, from what I've seen. CAT, by the way, stands for Combat Application Tourniquet, C-A-T. It's not named after a cat or anything, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Just attach the CAT tourniquet, now we're good to go. This is the body armor set up and ready to go. So I suppose we should try it on, right? I don't know if I'm going to spook him. No, why is he putting on body armor? Because I'm going to a shooting in Harlem. Damn, yo, somebody got shot in Harlem. Anyway, let's just... Let's just... Uh, yeah, i got to try it on these ones, right? Let's so cool. There we go. It's comfortable. It's high up, right? See how high that is. That's what you want. Admin pouch. Everything feels secure. Uh, the the uh, what is this called? Fast X buckle, not too tight, not too loose, quick release, right? Well, it's going to be confirmed job, certified CIS, CCG. Um, motorist is uh, the OSC. And we got a job. I think I like the other one better, but this will do. This will do. 5953, ready. 
Uptown platform. 